What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Justin Davis. Today I'm gonna to give you a real world hands-on look at the new FreeSky X9 Lite. It's brand new, it's sort of a miniature condensed down version of the X9D uh, with less switches. It does say it does 20 channels on board and it also has a new protocol called Access. It's called Advanced Communication Control Elevated Spread Spectrum. Yes, say it with me everybody all at once. Advanced Communication Control Elevated Spread Spectrum. Now, what does all of that mean? Well, it means that it's an entirely new protocol. It's not going to be backwards compatible with your old D16 receivers. You'll have to add a module on the back of it, which it does have a module bay, but coming with the OpenTX version of this new software system on board, it does not support all of your old receivers with the exception of the access protocol only type receivers. So you will have to use something like the RXSR to be compatible with this particular radio. Now, while it does look extremely similar to my X9D sitting here on the left hand side, it is very different with the new protocol, which I, I really wish they would have made it backwards compatible with the old receivers because I have an entire shop full of quads, wings, planes, and all kinds of multi-rotors here, micro brushless, that I can't fly with this radio. I cannot simply bind it up in D16 mode with my original XM Plus receivers. The value of this radio is around $79, which I think is pretty nice. The Operating system on here is very similar um, to the original X9D and very, very easy to navigate. Very similar also to the X7 originally. This is probably my most recommended radio of all time, by the way. Uh, also coming out new with the access system on board is uh, access only system on board is the X Lite Pro here. And we're going to do a full review of that one coming up. This one is the alternative to the X-Lite Pro because some people don't like the little sticks. If you've never flown an X-Lite before, um, before you buy one, try to find one locally and fly it for yourself and feel how the sticks feel to you because uh, it's not my preferred transmitter of choice just because the sticks feel a little bit small to me. I like a full-size gimbal stick. Uh, we're also going to talk about in this review the components used on here. We're going to talk about the gimbals that they chose, um, the grade of plastic, and the battery choice, and uh, the voltage. And we're also going to take a look inside the menus here. But who is this radio for? It is for the absolute beginner getting into the hobby that has not yet bought a bunch of receivers. One thing that you're gonna to have to be aware of though, if you decide to buy this radio, is the fact that when you are shopping for quads out there, if you are a new customer to the hobby and you're just getting into it, make sure that it has an RXSR or access compatible receiver on board, um, the bind and fly quad that you're buying. So, uh, or if you're trying to buy receivers for this radio, make sure that they are access compatible. It will say it down in the description of the specs for the receivers that you're buying. And I'll try to put a link down to all the compatible receivers for this radio um, in this video to help you guys out that have already bought this radio. But let's go ahead and jump right into the review. Let me show you what the X9 Lite's all about from all of the switches and the buttons on here. We'll talk about some of the features and the specs. And I'll show you some of the internal menus as well. And you can decide for yourself whether you'd like to grab one or not. Uh, and by the end of this video, you should have a great idea of what this radio is all about. Here we go. So here's the X9 Lite sitting next to the Tyrannus Q X7. This is one of the most um, recommended radios of all time on my channel. I have told so many of you guys to buy this radio. It supports a um, full-size module bay in the back, which I love uh, for using different radio protocol receivers out there. Um, there's tons of them out there in the hobby universe. And it also supports the ACCST on here, which is the free sky tyrannus um, native protocol and for the past several years i have been using all types of d8 d16 ppm we have been using s bus receivers on this and this radio is compatible with every single quadcopter in my shop with a free sky receiver on it um, and fast forward to 2019 we have this new protocol uh, it, it does say it is is 
safer. It doesn't have any way for someone to hack it and start fiddling with your sticks. Uh, I haven't found that to be a problem myself so far. As long as I've been flying, I've never had someone else take control of my sticks. Um, so that this may be more secure, but it's less compatible with every single other receiver I have in my shop. Now it is going to be compatible with a handful of different receivers out there that do support the access protocol, um, namely the X RXSR. This is this little receiver right here. These are about $20. You can get these. It has a little gold mine button, just like your original S Bus XM Plus receivers, like this one, just a little bit smaller. Even though they are diversity, they are very different because if you try to take your original D16 receivers and bind them up to your new radio, it will not work. Um, no matter how hard you try, you might be able to get firmware for these older receivers at some point, possibly make them compatible, but I really seriously doubt that's going to happen. So uh, what you're going to be subjected to is having to use the RXSR and the newer receivers coming from FreeSky. Now, the first thing we can talk about is the materials used. This is a budget radio, so um, this one is cheaper than the QX7, which is one of my favorite radios of all time. I've talked about it many times on the channel, but um, the plastic that they used, it is a cheaper gray plastic. Also, the gimbals are not hall gimbals like on the new X Lite Pro. They're miniature hall gimbals, and you can upgrade to the hall gimbals on the X7 which this one does not have hall gimbals. Um, I don't believe that you could upgrade these gimbals to the hall gimbals. Um, you might be able to, but I have a feeling that you can't. They do feel fairly plasticky. Uh, this side is notchy. You can feel, you can hear it, actually hear it, that it has notches in it. You're gonna have to open the back of the radio up to alleviate some of that pressure on there and get that notchy feeling to go away. That's not gonna be good for your throttle control when you're flying quads. Um, one other thing that I noticed is that it does not have rubber grips on the back of it either. So this being a budget radio, they took the rubber grips off the back. Um, the X7 has rubber grips, which I like a lot. It makes it really comfortable to hold. It's also a little bit larger and firmer in your hands um, than something like the X Lite uh, or the X Lite Pro. And I think this one's probably a happy medium in between the X Lite Pro. If I could just talk about a pro about this radio, I like this size format that they have these full size sticks on here, but it's in a smaller format, but not too small that it feels like a gaming controller. And we have a few less switches on this particular radio than some of the other ones out there like the Horus and the X, X7, but uh, we do have the two position switch up at the top left and I usually use this one for my arm switch. This one is a three position switch and a lot of times I keep my modes, my flight modes on this switch. We also have another three position switch here. We have a pot switch here which is a dial wheel. You can sort of uh, maybe add a gimbal on there later if you wanted to do some type of setup like that. And we have another three position switch over here. So, so far we have three three position switches, one two position here, and we have on the far right hand side, this is a momentary switch. We have your standard trim buttons here. We have a little spot for a lanyard here. It's actually two spots there. We have the power switch in the middle, and this is a push button power switch. We have the speaker up here. If you press and hold that, it's gonna go ahead and start up the OpenTX software. And there is also another type of operating system that's on there. It's called the ER Sky uh, operating system. And I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but uh, it does give you the option to do that. In the specs, it also says that it has a built-in spectrum analyzer function, which I think is really cool. So it should scan through the current available spectrums and uh, pick and see which one is the best one and lock onto that particular spectrum. Now on the very bottom of the radio, you do have these two feet. There are no rubber grips down here as well. So um, it's gonna feel kind of plasticky when you do set it down, but it does stand up and it does not fall over, which is great. Some of the other radios that they've made in the past, uh, they don't stand up very well, but this one stands up just fine. On the very bottom, we have the DSC port right here, and that's actually your wired trainer port. So if you wanted to hook this up to another transmitter and do some training while you're flying the sticks as the master controller, once you touch the sticks, you take over the aircraft. Uh, over here, you have your port for connecting to your computer. This is your micro USB port here. We have the SD card slot port here, your smart port right here, and your headphone jack right here. Uh, one thing that I 
don't like about this one versus the X7 again and most of the other free sky radio but this is covered up on some of the other ones there's a flap on the bottom of the x7 whereas this one does not have any type of dust protection on the bottom so that's also some concern to me that dust could get up inside your radio allowing more dust to come inside and get on top of your components so the best thing might be to keep these covered up somehow uh, when not in use also to keep your sd card from falling out when you set it down on something if something pushed on that as you set it down somewhere out in the field you could come back home without your sd card now on the back of the radio it does have the port for your multi-protocol bay right here you can get some long range r9 slim versions to put in the back back here uh, hopefully there is a module somewhere in the universe in the hub universe that would allow your standard s bus and xm plus receivers to be bound up to this option uh, and i'm going to show you that a little bit later when we go into the radio i'll show you the internal input and the ex external and inputs uh, for your antenna options now down here if you move this back you will see that i have 18650s in here two 18650s fit across and this bay in here does not come out so there's no other option than using the 18650s uh, but you can regularly get these at any vape shop or on amazon you can also get the chargers on amazon for these as well now one other thing that i thought was kind of strange in the manual for the x9 light was the fact that it shows a communication comparison list for the protocols uh, open tx is on every single one of the radios listed the x9d plus the qx7 here it is uh, also on the x9 light but the x9 light also has the er sky communication operation system um, you're probably not going to use that but what i thought was strange was that the communication protocol it says accst and access for the x9d which is kind of strange so the tyrannus x9d plus is compatible with access as well as the tyrannus qx7 is compatible with both accst and access protocol uh, with the update possibly of the new opentx software on board uh, very strange that they would not allow the accst to be available as a protocol on this radio so that all of your other receivers would be compatible with this radio now let's go ahead and power the radio on and let's check out the menus we have three buttons on the left hand side menu page and exit there and we have a push button dial wheel on the right hand side we'll go ahead and zoom in for you so you can see this a little bit closer up we have model one because i haven't named it yet and i haven't flown any quads on this radio yet so it's totally bare we do have a timer on the backlit display there it goes off every five seconds and you can also change that to be full on all the time or you can set it to go off uh, immediately or, or be off all the time so if you hit menu here it's going to take you to your model select and it does have up to 60 models it is expandable with the micro sd card slot at the below in the bottom so you can put all kinds of different models on here to your heart's content uh, if we click on that right hand wheel right there it brings back up copy move model and a lot of times i tell guys when they're first getting started the greatest thing about these radios is that if you have a friend help you set up one quad once you set up one quad say with s bus protocol uh, or your your x xsr receiver once you set that up and you know that everything works right all your switches are set up and things like that um, your switches are activated you can copy that model and move it down to the next one so uh, a lot of times that's what i will do instead of setting up a whole new model so now we have a copy of the original one there if we want or we can do move model so we can move back up or copy there uh, if you want to access the model itself hit the page button that's going to take you to this familiar screen this is the setup page where you can change the model name you can go back there by pressing exit you can scroll down this list you can turn on the timer the name persist off the countdown is set to silent right now you can also set that to beep and it, yeah there's haptic it does buzz so that's kind of cool we're just going to leave that for silent for now because i'm not using a timer if you have a certain quad that you know flies for two and a half minutes or three minutes you can set that to, depending on which model you're flying so you don't ruin your batteries we've got all the types of things in here pre-flight checklist in here and type of setup we have here reta one and this is where it gets interesting we're at the internal rf right here 
and this is the mode that we're set to ISRM right here. So that is your access protocol for the internal RF module. So watch this. We can't change it to anything else other than ISRM. So there is no going to D16 or D8 for the internal module. Kind of a bummer. Um, we don't have that option. So if you turn it off, we go down to external RF, which would be your port in the very back. If you had some type of module, it will let you select PPM, ISRM, DSM2, R9M access, SBUS, and that's how you're going to access your other receivers like your, um, your D16 and D8 protocol receivers. So um, very interesting that this is not an option for the internal module. Kind of a bummer actually. So we're going to set that to off and we're going to set this back to ISRM. That is our access protocol. And for your fail safe, generally I set that to no pulses. So we're just going to set that back to no pulses there. And other options are interesting that we can have an individual module. So if you wanted to do uh, a redundancy type of receiver setup on a long range wing or something like that, you can do that. And our RX external RF mode, PPM, ISRM, and all your different protocols there. And timer again, and now we're all the way back around. So now we'll go to the next page, and the next page over is heli setup. I'm not going to use that. Uh, flight modes, inputs, you can go in here and press and hold, and you can edit and change up your inputs there. And this is where you can also add switches. Say on number five there, if we wanted to add um, a switch here, we're going to go down. We can name it there. Let's just not name it real quick. We're just going to go back down. Let's go back out. Okay. Oops. Now we're going to get back to that menu. There we go. Let's go down to the source. To set a switch, just click on that one time and then set your switch to this switch right here. So that's SD. We're going to activate that switch. I'm going to go back to SD again. You can scroll through the list or you can move the switch itself. Now we can exit that. We're going to exit out of that all the way back to the main screen. And now we have one switch active. Um, and that's how you're going to activate a switch. It's pretty simple. So down here it says source max. I'm just going to do another switch here for you. You can see it sh once I click on it, it will move to SA. Or I could do this one over here. And that's SC. Let's just do SA like we had before. And then we're going to exit. And now we have two switches set up for the radio. Now let's go ahead and page over to the next one. This is mixer. You can also add your switches here as well. And outputs, we have curves, logical switches, special functions, and your telemetry for your RSSI. Pretty much all the same as the other radios out there, uh, like the X7 and the X9D. And the next page over is display. And we're back to the main model menu there. And to turn this radio off, you just press on the power button here and hold it down for four seconds and it will turn off as quick as that. It's kind of nice that you have to hold it down for a certain period of time before it cuts off. You don't want to accidentally hit the power button while you're flying and have this radio turn off on you. Now I can make this review several hours long and we could talk about OpenTX operating system all night here, uh, but I've gone through just the basics of the radio. I just wanted to give you an, an introduction to the radio itself and show you what's in the menus, uh, as well as show you the external features, obviously, in comparison to some of the other radios out there. Um, still, I think my, my main choice for beginners is for now going to be still reigning the Tyrannus QX7, um, just because most of the receivers out there can work with it on the D16 protocol like the XM Plus here. That's a popular favorite on a lot of the micro brushless right now. And if you want to make this one work with this particular radio, it did say in the manual that you're going to have to go to the FR Sky, the Free Sky website and download the firmware to update this receiver. And that's another problem for a lot of beginners. They just don't know how to do that. So um, that's a no whole nother video to be able to update your receiver. So um, you can do that from the smart port on your radio, but um, 
yeah, that's just a whole other process that a beginner is going to have to get into. And uh, so for now, I'm still going to recommend the Tyrannus QX7 uh, as my number one pick for the new guys. But it is nice that there is another option out there available. I just hope that they update this radio somehow, uh, whether it's a physical update to make it be able to do ACCST as well as access. I think that would be a better value for customers coming up. Maybe the future version of it, maybe the X9 Pro will have both different protocols um, and switchable would be really, really nice. But again, thanks again for watching my reviews, guys. I'm Justin Davis. This has been another honest review. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.